You know, when you go into Google and you type in a search and there's a time clock in the corner that shows you how fast you were able to get the search, your brain is faster than that. But if you don't treat your, if you don't treat your brain like it's a valuable tool, then someone else will use it to their advantage. I'll say that again. If you don't treat your brain like a valuable tool, the quality of your thoughts are priceless, but someone else is cashing in on those thoughts because you don't even think well about yourself. Hey family, my name is Jamal Valera and I'm a certified mindset and neuroscience peak performance coach. And you are doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Hey family, welcome to another episode. I am so excited that you are here. I do not take it lightly that you decided to hit that play button and spend about an hour of your time with me. So with that being said, I want you to know that I'm 100% invested in your self-awareness journey. So you better believe that every week I'm bringing my A game for providing you the tools necessary to live a more fulfilled, purpose-driven life. So family, I want to remind you to please take a moment to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Because as you know, I've said a lot to go to touch one million hearts within the first two years of the podcast, and I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share this conversation with at least four people you know, and repost on your favorite social media platform. Also, don't forget to click the join community link that's in the show notes so we can stay connected and continue the conversation. Family, I am hyped. You heard me? I am hyped. I am so ready for us to dig into the Strategize Your Vision series for the next 12 weeks. This series is based off my Master Life class, Strategize Your Vision, which I teach you the step-by-step formula for building a rock-solid strategy to manifest your vision. Now, as I stated on Monday, wait, if you haven't listened to the first episode of the year, then please go back and do so. I'm giving you the groundwork for the next 12 weeks and we dived into purpose, what it means, why it's important, and the impact it will have on your life. And then for our moment of truth on Thursday, I teach you how you can start the process to identify your purpose. And this is just one of many ways that you can start the process to identify your purpose. So start with the first week of episodes, then come back and join us here so you can catch up. All right. So for the next 12 weeks, we're going to have conversations about the blessing in embracing your purpose and how your mental wellness, safety and security, personal development and professional growth, spirituality and faith and support team building plays a part in your decision to operate in purpose. Today, family, yes, today, we're going to get our brain right. And yes, I said brain Right. Not our mind right because Jamal specializes in neuroscience. We're going to shift and reconnect our thinking so what we do for the next year is in alignment with purpose. We have to get our brain right so if something as huge as the pandemic happens again, God forbid, please, not again, Lord, please, okay? But if something like the pandemic happens again or something on that level, our downtime is not, you know, a whole year. Like we're not off our game for a whole year. We can mentally recover faster than what we did last year. Now, Phil, before we, before you even form that thought in your head, yes, it's possible. Yes, I know what the world faced as a whole. Yes, I can only imagine what you experienced in your individual world. But it doesn't change my belief that no matter what happens, you can shorten your downtime to bounce back quicker, faster, better. Okay. Okay. So hopefully I have intrigued you. Okay. So now let me introduce you to Jamal Valer. Jamal Valer is a trained speaker certified in areas of mindset, neuroscience, performance, and life coaching. 
It is his life mission to help executives, entrepreneurs, and business professionals explore and maximize their inner genius, create more fulfilling lives, and help his clients transform their life goals into reality. With over 15 years of U.S. Naval Aviation experience and organizational leadership training, he utilizes his expertise gained to coach and empower high achievers with transformational mindset shifts that improve teamwork and productivity. Jamal's arena of genius is also in helping purpose-driven leaders with combining burnout, improve emotional intelligence, and elevating his clients' creativity in new levels of self-mastery. Jamal's further interest in the brain science of how the mind truly works and how to create life-changing mental shifts inspired his continued education to achieve certifications from the Optimine Neuroscience Institute, additionally becoming a coach specialized in neuro brain health, neurospirituality, and peak performance management. Now, you can follow Jamal on Instagram at CoachJamal underscore Valair. You can follow him on Facebook at Coach Jamal Valair. Or visit his website, www.jamalvalair.com. Now, let's get into this good conversation with Jamal Valair. Jamal, thank you so much for saying yes to have this conversation with me today. Thank you so much for having me. It is a pleasure and it's an honor to be in front of you and your audience. Uh, Life has been grand. I really can't complain. So I'm grateful to be a part of your community and share what I have with your audience. Thank you so much. And I'm... Really excited about this conversation. I say this all the time, but that's because I talk to some amazing people. I've been blessed to, to know some amazing people, but I'm excited about our conversation because you are a certified life coach and you have some really good, you know, knowledge and expertise that can be brought to this conversation. And I have experienced this firsthand. So I like to start off every conversation with talking about how I come to know the person that I am speaking with. So I don't, I don't know if you may remember, but we met in a um, online mastermind. I was a part of an online mastermind and you were one of the accountability coaches slash life coaches that would come in and do the uh, office, not the office hours, study hours with us. And you would do presentations to help us on work-life balance. Man, we learned yes. a lot. Well, I'm going to speak for everybody that we learned a lot from, you know, from your expertise. And so um, it was a no brainer to have you on the podcast. And so when you put out, you know, the the message saying, you know, hey, I'm open to do podcast episodes. I was like, yes, let me go ahead and put my put my hat in the ring. I would love to have Jamal. On the, I am um, humbled. I am yeah, 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 yeah. But but Jamal, I, I also have a confession. You have a cute little girl too. So that's another reason why. <laughs> Look, my, my two year my two year old, soon to be three, she gets me all of the business. I still post a picture of her, I get three hundred likes. I post a, a picture or a quote that's inspirational, motivational, I get five. And it's and and three of them is usually from my mother. So I was like, oh, no, I have to use my daughter for marketing because she is uh, she is my little princess. She is my heart. Um, so, and, and they said we look alike. So I even got a compliment even in that. I was like, because normally when your daughter's really, really cute, she looks exactly like her mother. But every once in a while, every one in 50 people say, I, you know, I kind of see your dad in you. And I said, you know what, God, you really do love me. <laughs> Love it, but she's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. I love it when you post the pictures of her and stuff. So I definitely, definitely enjoyed it. So she's definitely gorgeous. So, you know, don't explore her too much. But yeah, definitely, definitely share the pitch of your, the pictures of your little princess. So, so yeah, I'm super excited about this conversation because, you know, we're at the, the top of the year. 2021 is here, right? Yes. And <laughs> 2020. Thank God. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> 2020 was uh, was one for the books for sure and I know a lot of people are or were excited and just anxious for 20, 2021 to to get here because we were just over 2020 like by July probably May <laughs> we were just over it and um, so I wanted to start the conversation off with you at the you know at the top of the year because it's time for us to really refocus and refresh and just really restart it's time for us to really put together strategies or action plans on how we're going to manifest the vision that we have for our life because we had a vision because mind you we're in a whole new decade 
So we had a vision for the new decade, which got interrupted abruptly, right? So it's time mm -hmm. to pivot back to that original plan, tweak it, change it in the areas where we need to change based off of the lessons that we learned from last year. So I wanted to know your professional opinion, should we even reflect on last year in order to Absolutely. really figure out how to move forward? Absolutely. Thank you so much for the question. So for um, there are four levels of mindsets that I like to help people get really acquainted with. Um, and the reason why it shape our, our reality is shaped based on our perception. It doesn't mean it's necessarily accurate, but it is. it does shape what we see. For example, if I say, I want you to go into this room and I want you to find everybody who doesn't like you. It's real easy, right? But if I give you a different incentive and I say, I'll give you $1,000 for everybody who you, th who you think likes you or gives you a, a smile, I'll bet you your perspective will be changed. So for a long time, you know, we heard 2020, it's going to be my year, especially if you're in, in the spiritual world, 2020, clear vision. And we have these aspirations that we connect to a year, but we don't connect to a mindset, a discipline and a behavior, right? So we get into 2020 and like, oh, we get COVID-19, we have what, 30 million people who are without a job, people who are entrepreneurs, people who are in the space of, of in a true way 2020, when there were so many lessons learned, there were so many gifts, um, there were so many opportunities to transform yourself. Most people got time. Most people complain that they don't have enough time to work on their business, write their book, leave their nine to five to start their entrepreneurship uh, endeavors. And they complain for so long, they said, I don't have enough time. And then COVID happens and we have all this time and what do you do with it? You waste it. The book that was supposed to be written was never written. The opportunity to, to launch out into entrepreneurship never really took place, right? Or me spending more quality time with my kids or my family, that was the priority always on my list, but I never maximized on the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So when people say it was 2020 a waste, no. You know why? Because you learn lessons. For some people, I can speak for myself, I made more financially in 2020 than my previous years. <laughs> right. And let me tell you the secret to that. Because people pay premium Please. for solutions. People pay premium for solutions. When you identify yourself as a solution to a problem, you don't have to worry about bargaining or bargaining for your work. But as long as you're complaining with everybody else about the problems, no one, now you have forfeited your opportunity to be a solution to a problem. I have never been on more Zoom conversations than I've ever been in, in, throughout 2020, but I've had more people paying to be on Zoom than ever, ever, been, than ever been before, right? So there's always an opportunity and an obstacle. The problem is, is you're looking at your obstacle too long without the opportunity. So what happened was for 2020, the more times that we had issues, the more times that we had problems, I said, okay, God, show me how I can be a solution, whether it be helping people with their personal development, reaching their goals, motivating or inspiring them or helping them understand how the brain works. So my study, I'm a mindset and I'm a neuroscience pre-performance coach. Um, and so I've got the chance to learn really how the brain works. And what I've learned is if you strip all these labels and limitations that we put lace on ourselves and we identify naturally just how the brain, whatever I feed the brain, it gives me back, right? If I look for negativity, I'll find it. If I'm looking for positivity. Matter of fact, the brain turns, when you think negativity, you turn off the most advanced part of your brain, which is your prefrontal cortex. It's your ability to, it's, it's your natural ability to be able to think um, beyond your current situation, but also break down complex thoughts. So what happens is when you're operating from a negative mindset, you turn that off. And then you go into your fear monk. You're going to pretty much, you hear fear mongering. It's called amygdala hijack. And it's the size of an acorn in your, in your, in your brain. And so what happens is cortisol is released. So your brain doesn't know the difference between if you're um, in, in 4,000 years ago when you're fighting, you're running away from a saber tooth tiger, or if you're just stressed about a bad day. It doesn't know the difference. So naturally, it goes into a fight, flight, or freeze mode, right? And, do, and all the blood that naturally would go to your brain to make great decisions now goes to your arms and your legs. So I need to run or I do need, need to fight. And if you're from the hood, you already know when it's time to fight, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, well, I'm well polished, but these hands have a two-for-one coupon at any given time. <laughs> um, so 
it is very important to understand mindfulness. Mindfulness is your ability to be able to quiet your mind, quiet your spirit, so you can hear what's really going on. So you don't automatically go into, I'm in danger, because you're not. And if you don't tell the mind and your body, Body, that you're safe and you're secure, it will stay in that stress state. Can I tell you that stress has killed more people? Being it's because if you're infected by, by a, a, a disease, then your body will fight it off. If you're constantly in a stress state, can I tell you that your immune system breaks down, you start, your body starts to break down over a period of time, and COVID may be for a short period of time, but imagine if you've been constantly in a stress state, right? Even when you sleep and you're stressed, you're, what, what are you doing? You're not able, your brain is more active when you're asleep than when you're awake. It's taking information from your short-term memory and your hippocampus to your long-term memory. That's how you're able over a good night's sleep, which is usually about six to seven hours. After a good night's sleep, you're able to operate from a different level of creativity. You're able to break down complex situations that you normally wouldn't do. So what happens is on our, on our, on our, on, and this is going into the neuroscience, just my nerd side, you make 35,000 decisions a day. That goes from I'm going to move my arms, my heartbeat, you know, making sure you di your digestion system works, how many times you're going to blink your eyes, how many times your heart beats. That's all being counted. That's naturally 35,000. You have 60,000 thoughts a day. The quality of the thought becomes the quality of your perception, right? Why am I saying all this? It's because you go into autopilot. And 90% of who we are is based on our so subconscious program. So we go through a phase from zero to four is where our first stage where you're in the, in your, when you're in that theta state. Theta state is why kids can watch, uh, can learn three or four different languages, play the piano, do all these different things. That is your first stage of learning. They learn all the rules to life, what they cannot do. Can I have a cookie? No, but I'm not an accident. I can have a cookie, right? They are already learning how to manipulate. Age 12, when you're age 12, then you're about 21, you get to another growth in your brain, and then everything is pretty much autopilot. So they said you can program, a per, you know, if you can program a personality, all, all that happens within the first couple of years of who you are. Why is this important? Because we think that who we are is based on our five senses, our ability to see, touch, look, all these are five senses. But that's only five to 10% of who we are. The other part of who we are, the other 90% or 95%, it's all based on subconscious programs. So if you've been raised in a scarcity mindset, which is a low level vibration of understanding, right? Scarcity, meaning there's not enough. I have to fight. I have to hustle for everything that I want out of life. That you will never see enough. I can. You can say, "Oh, if I had a million dollars, and you'll after you get the million dollars, you'll be in two million dollars worth of debt." Think I need three million dollars, right? Because it's from a scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. Then you have uh, what is what is another mindset where where you feel like I always have to compete, right? There's a difference between being in a place of hustle and flow. Right. Hustle is where I have to work twice. We, and we have these limiting beliefs. You have to work twice as hard as the next person to be. No, you just operate on your genius. And most people have never really understand that they're genius. And, the, and what I'm only you're only responsible for the gifts and the talents that you've been given. That means I'm not responsible for Tony Robbins gifts and talents. I'm not responsible for Oprah's gifts and talents. I'm only responsible for the gifts and talents that I've been given. So if my level of create, if I'm not focusing on my genius and my creativity, that I'm, I'm the reason why I'm not successful, right? It becomes self-mastery. How do I master the skills and the talents that I have so I can be able to write my own price? It's a crazy, Floyd Mayweather, regardless if you like him or not, you can, you can say a lot about him, but it's, he made a very good point. He says, it's crazy until somebody pays for it. Mm. That's good. Right? It's, it, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, had, I have a friend of mine, he's an international coach. And he says, you know what? I do. I bring, I get four or five, I get four to six people together. We find an exotic place like Spain or Italy. I coach them for a weekend and they pay me $10,000 to do that. And then I make them accountability partners for six months. I've never heard of anything like that. But he says people pay it all the time. So what did that do? That put me in a place of possibility. Like, you know what? I may be thinking too small to say this particular coaching package. The scarcity says that nobody's making money. Yeah at this time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. But there's a higher level of vibrations and, and those are growth and abundance. Growth is if I, whatever I put my time to and if I learn a skill set, I will get better, I will increase, I will overcome 
and I will learn how to be able to exploit my weaknesses or exploit uh, issues that maybe seem common to other people, but an opportunity for me, right? Growth says, if I, if I give myself some grace, because one thing we're very, very judgmental of who we are, mm-hmm. our inner critic, mm-hmm. which is our analysis paralysis, it really usually stops us from taking action. Um, but there was a great quote that I heard and it says, uh, fear is a natural uh, reaction, but courage is, is a decision. Mm. Fear is a natural reaction and encouragement is a decision. Courage is a decision. Courage is a decision. You're using your courage muscle. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because there's there's nothing wrong with your emotions. It's just how you respond to them. If you're operating from a place of fear, you're not even using your full brain to be able to look at the problem from, from the best context. And that's right, why action, a- and that's why action get rid gets rid of fear or eliminates fear because you actually right. take in action. So you actually taking the fear out of whatever it is that you're fearful of because you've taken action, the courage, exercising the courage muscle. Absolutely. How many solutions? How many problems have you made up in your head that never actually really happened? Hey, family! Quick announcement: If you're ready to go deeper and would love to continue the conversation outside the podcast, then I have something just for you. I'm creating a safe, judgment-free community of like-minded people to grow and build the support team that we need to operate in purpose. If you want to join me, please visit livingherttruthpodcast.com and then click the join community button so we can partner together on your self-awareness journey. I am looking forward to getting to know each and every one of you. I am so excited to deep dive into your purpose. And we're going to have such a great time, you guys. I look forward to seeing you in the group. Now, back to the conversation. I use my earpieces. Yeah, that's that's a lot better. That's a lot better. Thank God for, God, thank God for being able to adjust. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh-huh. That's the, the devil trying to stop people from getting this good information because that's that good information. So I, I love what you said that um, fear, what was it again? Fear is... F- fear, fear is not necessarily real. It is a construct to make you safe, mm-hmm. right? We go into, we, we go into um, it, it, fight or flight. Can I tell you that the brain is not designed to make you happy? The, the brain is designed to make you safe. Wow, that's going to free a lot of people right there. The brain is not designed to make you happy. It's, it's not. designed to make you safe. And, and, and your greatness will never be found in your comfort zone, but your brain is designed to be comfortable. It will look for the familiar. And the, one of the reasons why it looks for the familiar is it's called, it's, it's not necessarily negative. It's just, it's just trying to do the best good in this situation. Why do I say that? Because it's, it's such thing called as information bias. So your brain takes up 20% of your energy so if it hears some information that you've already heard before, it'll automatically disregard it and move on to the next thing to conserve energy. So this is why mindfulness and meditation is very, very powerful because awareness is one of your most powerful gifts. Mm-hmm. You can't get to your destination destination if you don't necessarily know where you currently are. Mm-hmm. It's like your GPS. You say, I'm trying to get to 100K this year. I'm mm-hmm. trying to get to 500K this year. Where are you at now? Right. If you can't assess where you are now, it's going to be very, very hard to reach those particular goals. So it, with that being said, it's very, very important that you understand, number one, what are my thought processes? What is my thought? Because it's the process towards action. My thoughts, my behave, my belief system, my behavior, and then my actions. Right. And then whatever I repeat, I perfect, whether it be good, bad or the ugly. Right. If I if I if I perfect being negative, that's all I'll find. Mm -hmm. If I perfect, if I perfect that there are opportunities in every single obstacle, Mm -hmm. then you will always be able to say, how can I capitalize on this? Because many times we shy away from our weaknesses and our weaknesses, weaknesses become a liability to our dreams. Oh, I'll do this until I have to deal with the weakness that I really. So I always tell people, write out your weaknesses. Don't no longer allow them to be an, an, a justification of why you don't become the best and highest expression of yourself. Mm-hmm. Work on those. That means if I need to get a mentor, if that means I need to get a support system, mm-hmm. if that means I need to hire a coach, don't let your weakness become the very reason why you don't, you don't leave this earth 
pouring out everything that you're supposed to put up, pour out. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important when it comes to making goals, they say, oh, in the first three months of 2020, I mean, correction, 2021, most people give up on their goals. Yeah. So the first 90 days, you're like, you first know what? Days. I'm going to lose... I'm gonna lose these pounds. I'm gonna get my sexy back. Mm. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get on 15 podcasts, or mm. I'm gonna go for that big contract that I've always thought was out of my reach. Whatever your thing is, in the first 90 days, let me tell you the reason why a lot of people fell in the first 90 days. Tell me. They have because they have no accountability. Mm. So you keep your dreams to yourself. If they fail, you'll just backdate them to another year. Mm. There are dreams and aspirations that you should have accomplished in 20. 20 in spite of COVID, but because no one was holding you accountable. Mm -hmm. Am I in the house? Nobody was holding you accountable. Oh, oh yeah, you in the kitchen, you in our backyard. <laughs> right, because nobody was holding you accountable. You already postponed it to 2021. Can I tell you, if you're not in, in, at 20, in October of 2020, if you're not working on 2020, 2021, then you're already behind the power curve. Yep, 100%. The people, the people I started in August are preparing for the next year. I started in August of right. every year preparing for the next. Most people are waiting for a date for a transformational change. And that never happens mm -hmm. because the date will always be moved because life will always demand something from you. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Life, whether it be kids, bills, they're always going to be there. <laughs> Spouse, <laughs> baby daddies, booze, whatever we're working with, there is always going to be a demand of your time, your energy, your creativity, your, 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 your brilliance, even your nine to five. They want that out of you. That's why they pay you just enough so you don't quit. And this is not, a, I, I, if, you're, if you're in the corporate world, there are people doing great in the corporate world. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're in the entrepreneurship side, there's, I, I, I don't like when people try to say, well, you, if you're doing entrepreneurship, then, then, then there's something wrong with you. We need people in both sectors. But what am I saying is at, at the end of the day, are you operating at your max capacity? Or are you just living a safe life? And I, when I say safe life, because we've created this false reality of what happiness is. When I want to get the white picket fence, I want to get the house. I want to get the spouse and the two kids. And then, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to, that's not necessarily fulfillment. Mm -hmm. That is living someone else's dream and making it, trying to make it your reality. And you don't have that level of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Another reason, number two reason why people fail within the first 90 days is because they don't write down their vision. Remember I talked about in the first, and in, in, in you have 60,000 thoughts a day. You can't even count where you got to 60,000 at, right? But if you don't write it, it doesn't, it, what you're doing, writing is a psychology where it takes something from the, from, from the invisible into the natural, mm -hmm. right? It's a transfer of priority. It gives you massive focus. And whatever you focus your power to, that, focus your mind to, that's what you give power to. So the more that I tell you to focus on this particular thing, you're telling your brain and your subconscious mind that this is a priority. Your brain is a supercomputer. You know, when you go into Google and you type in a search and there's a time clock in the corner that shows you how fast you were able to get the search, your brain is faster than that. But mm. if, you don't treat your, if you don't treat your brain mm. like it's a valuable tool, then mm. someone else will use it to their advantage. I'll say that again. Mm. If you don't treat your brain like a valuable tool, the quality of your thoughts are priceless, but someone else is cashing in on those thoughts because you don't even think well about yourself. So writing down the vision, how often are you looking at your goals, whether it be quarterly, yearly, or in the next five years? We write them down and we put them in a notebook and we don't look at them again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, oh, there was, I meant to do that. I've always wanted to, right? How often are you affirming that these goals, how often are you speaking life to these goals? How often are you reading over these and saying, okay, this is my, this is my book of genius. These are the different strategies. These are different ways on how I can accomplish these goals. Mm -hmm. Right. Because along with accountability is not everybody needs the same level of accountability. Some people may need that drill sergeant. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm 16 years military, so I know how to tap into that. Ah, side. Ah, <laughs> ah. But some people, <laughs> some people might just need a slight nudge of, hey, I believe in your dream. Most people have not really been told that that I actually they, someone believes in their dream. Yeah, yeah. So, so when so when their inner critic is going crazy, talk about what you can't do. Look at all the different ways you failed. Uh, this is all the different ways that you sh you were shortcome. Nobody else in your family has done that. What makes you so special? How dare you want more than what you have already? You're doing better than somebody else. All these different things. I'm not enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not attractive enough. I can't make money. 
you know, you know, I can't create my own money. And I, can I tell you, can I pause for a minute? Because when you operate from a place of abundance and growth, mm -hmm. you create money. <clears throat> you create money. You can never be a master to what you're a slave to. Mm. I'm going to say it. Mm -hmm. So if you're a slave to money, you it, will never, it, will never, it, it will never see you as its master. Mm -mm. So you will, you will always be striving to be able to get the next check. But when you learn that money is something you create and it's designed to work for you, then you can speak it, then you can create a strategy and it will come into existence. That's how master manifestation takes place. Mm -hmm. I speak it, but not only just speak it, because we say a lot of crazy stuff, yeah. right? But I create, I create a plan. I have a love of accountability, but I create action steps. And I, what, what, many times we have plan A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. What if we just had plan A and we just kept on adjusting it? Because sometimes plan a, B and C is an excuse on why we never go after plan A. Exactly. But see, but the thing is, is the reason, one of the reasons why we don't stick to plan A is because people make you feel as though that if plan A don't happen in a certain time frame, then mm -hmm. it's, it's a failed plan and you need to move on to something mm -hmm. else. We don't have patience to go through mm -hmm. the process and to learn what it is that we need to learn and master what we need to master and switch it up the way we need to switch it up mm -hmm. because we are focusing on what everybody else's level of success is. We focus on what yes. everybody else is saying. Oh, mm -hmm. you should be further along than that. Mm -hmm. well, well, how but, do you know? So, so let, let me help you with that. Um, nobody else can make you feel inferior without first getting your permission. Mm. No one can make you feel less than without first getting your permission. The question is, how have I fortified who I am? Where I am so confident in the vision, the mission that I have been given that I don't need other people's approval. So how do we, so how does, how does self-awareness tap into that? Self-awareness. So one, one of the from giving people permission. Self-awareness is where you, and I, and I know we talk about self-love and I think it's sometimes it's usually kind of pushed out um, of just materialistic. It's never internal job, internal job. And when I, what, what, what happens is where you take more time working on your interior than your exterior. We try to, we, we, we have been taught that we're supposed to keep an image up and we never really do the internal work. Mm -hmm. And so when, when, when life hits us, when those storm comes, our, our foundation is not built on a rock, it's built on sand. It's based, it's based on things that are temporary and vanity. Mm -hmm. And so we never really get an opportunity to get to know who we are. One of the, one of the most powerful questions that I ask my question is, my, my clients is, who are you? Ooh, that gets, that stumps people every time. Who are you? And, and when most people treat it as a destination versus a journey, because mm -hmm. people will get people say this is who I am and put a period there mm -hmm. and that's where they stump their growth that's where they stop coming the best and highest expression you know we hear these phrases what well, you can't handle me at my worst you can't handle me at my best first of all you might be just in your worst place and definitely because you have limited you put a glass ceiling on what's possible because you got so comfortable in who you used to be that you've given up on your dream of who you can become mm -hmm. because the first question that I ask you is who are you it's a point of where am I at on the map of my growth journey? Mm -hmm. The second question is, who are you trying to become? Because many times we spend most times just, this is who I am. And it's usually been told to us who we are, whether it be from mm -hmm. our parents, whether it be from our society. If you're yes. a woman, you can only be this. If you're a man, you can only be this. Yes. If, you, if you're poor, you can only be this. If you're rich, you can only be this. We, society has told you who you can, and you have rehearsed all these different rules from birth that you no longer have taken the time to step outside of someone else's reality and say, this is not even what I want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you, do you, there, are, there are millionaires who commit suicide because they have lived their life trying to become someone else's image and have no fulfillment. Yep. They are completely empty. And there are people, like I said, depression comes for anybody. You can be rich, poor, it, 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 <laughs> depression, all, you know, because I'm also a suicide awareness uh, uh, coordinator. Even for suicide, there, people get to this place where there's no hope. And then they, they find themselves trapped. And so it's very, very important to get into, into a deep conversation of who am I? Whether they be going through counseling, going through therapy, because a lot of people have survived trauma. So people who've so tra who have just survived life, they don't see the world from a place of growth and abundance. They see it from scarcity and fixed. 
fixed mindset, it, it will always be this way. No matter what can happen, it will always be with this way. So the four mindsets that I want to make sure everybody's aware of is scarcity is usually a low level frequency where there's not enough. Fixed means it's always going to be there no matter what happens. Growth is means I can apply knowledge, information. I can learn a new skill set and become better. And then abundance says there's more than enough. I, you, I have no competition because I'm operating from my place of self-mastery, creativity, and genius. Every single person, when's the last person someone told you you were a genius? And we measure genius by IQ. Yeah. But every single person on this earth has a level of genius and creativity because they were created by a creator. You are naturally creating things whether it be sentences, whether it be, whether it be products or content, you are designed to create. But we spend more time consuming than creating. So now we lose the very thing that's made us great. You know what? When you said that, when was the last time somebody said that you was a genius? You know what popped into my, ma- in my mind? What's that? The fact that women in particular, I'm going to speak from, a, from the aspect of women in particular, we mm-hmm. have a hard time accepting compliments. Because people compliment mm. us all the time, right? They'll say, you know, he should, this was a genius podcast episode. I love the conversation. And then I, instead of me saying, you know, thank you, I appreciate that. I'm like, well, you know, we had all these technical difficulties and, you know, it took me so long to get them on. Mm. I really wanted to say, and I, and I sound like, it's like, just accept the, just accept the compliment and, and hear mm. what the person is saying. The person could be literally telling that you're operating your genius. You're operating mm. in a space of frequency where you're supposed to be that you possibly didn't even know was your area of expertise. Right. You know, mm. but we black it and we miss it because we're so focused on, you know, what it ain't or what we're not that we're not even paying attention mm. to what it is the person is telling to us. And I'm so glad you made that point. Usually the result of that is because we have been taught to be humble. Ah. Right. If you, you, you can't, you, you should, you know, we, and there's different principles that says you should let another person brag about you. Um, but what if nobody see, nobody, if, what if everybody's so busy into their world that they don't get a chance to say, speak about your greatness? Mm-hmm. What opportunities are you missing out on because you're just hiding behind a false humility because you're secretly scared to say I exist. Mm-hmm. Or you're dealing with the, if you're dealing with the limiting belief that I'm not enough. Yeah, yeah. That is, a, that is one of the biggest, I, I'm a coach and I still have to deal with, am I enough? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and do, I have to over, do I have to overwork for my prices because I need to be able to prove to the other person that I'm really worth the transaction, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Am I really, really enough? The lies that we tell ourselves mm-hmm. or how we compare ourselves, when we compare ourselves, we lose an opportunity of joy Ooh. because- we, we start taking inventory of someone else's gifts and talents at the cost of overlooking the gifts and talents that we've been, gre- been given. Yeah. And your genius is, is just as unique as your fingerprints. You can have triplets and twins and their fingerprints are always going to be different. Your genius is that unique. Because sometimes we just feel we've just been put together. No, you have been, you, you have been handcrafted as a masterpiece. You've been, and, and I, I, I say this all the time when I speak, you have permission, because that's the second thing. We're always looking for permission. Always looking for permission. You have permission to be a work in progress and a masterpiece at the same time. That's going to free somebody. That's going to free somebody right there. Say it again, Jamal. Say it again for the people you, in the background. You have the permission to be a work in progress and a masterpiece at the same time. And this leads, leads me to my other, my fifth reason on why people are not really successful. Because everything that they identify that they want to accomplish is a job or a task. There is no reward system placed in it. The brain looks for, is there a reward to this or is this another task that I have to do? So if you have, if you set up, so one thing that I do with my clients, I say, what are your yearly goals? Let's reverse en- engineer that into breaking that into quarters. So every three months, how, what do those goals look like? What action steps can we do within this quarter? And then we break it down even further. We say, okay, what every week, what do we want to accomplish within this quarter, right? So now those macro goals now have been broken into my, to, to the micro goals. So in, your dream should intimidate you just a little bit, but it should be overwhelming where you can't see what yeah. your next step forward is. And so a lot of people lack clarity. Oh, I want to make a million dollars. How? I want to make $500,000. I, I want to make what I make in a year, in a month, right? I had people, I got, I, I made sure that my, my circle started. I wanted to make sure my circle or was surrounded with people who think bigger than me because it becomes infectious 
if I get around people who think bigger than me, mm-hmm. then I don't get jealous. I get inspired. Yes. Because that now they, they have propelled me to say, Jamal, you're thinking too small. Yeah. Don't go for safe. Go for the go for the go for the dream that that just intimidates you just a little bit because your greatness is over there. Your greatness will never be found inside of your comfort zone. It will it doesn't have the capacity to do so. And so one thing you have to do is also identify your capacity. Am I hanging around people who pour into me, or am I always pouring out to everyone else and nobody's pouring into me? You have to make sure that you have a support system. Number six, you should have a support system that holds you accountable to the best and highest expression of yourself. When can you we, say- can we, can, we, can we talk about that a little bit? And the reason why is because in 2020 during the pandemic, relation, our relationships were tainted a little bit, right? Our mm. relationships was definitely put, to, you know, put through the test. So how do we mm. rebuild and re-energize our relationships so we can have that support system that we need to accomplish mm. these goals and these visions that we have for our life? So, so going into the question of who am I and what do I need, right? Assess your relationships. Are, 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 you, are they mutual or are you giving more or giving less? Mm-hmm. The reason why I say is when you understand who you are, then you can, I get, when you get clarity, you can take action. Mm-hmm. That's the first key. Mm-hmm. It went, vague goals turn into vague results every single time. So some, many times we have vague relationships with no intentionality. Or that we, or we do, we have friendships based on time served. I've known you for a long period of time. I'm going to drag you along, even though that the relationship is no longer mutually beneficial. Mm-hmm. And then you also have to understand you have different layers of friendships. You have your confidants where you can say all of the crazy things, and they're not going to judge you. Mm-hmm. You have you have associates who are just might be for business, mm-hmm. um, and you have acquaintances, yeah. right? Acquaintances, hey girl, how you doing? Hey, how you, you know, there, there, you have levels, but if you have two or three confidants, then you're doing really, really good. Mm-hmm. But also many times we look outward and say, you know what, this person's not loyal, this person, what kind of friend have I really been? Oof. That's so many funny. times, look, if we're not look, if we're not going to look in this mirror, then don't even start looking at everybody else and say, you know what, you flawed in this area because the same flaws that you have or the things that might be a pet peeve, you might be a little bit guilty of yourself. Right. This person never has time for me. When's the last time you called somebody on your fault on, on your in your in your inner circle? Say, hey, you're on my mind. I'm praying for you. Hey, tell me what dream you're working on. I want to support you. Right. So many times. And then the clarity helps us be able to teaches our friends and our confidence and our acquaintances on how to support us. We often assume, but we're all different people. So when you when you talk with your confidants, your close friends and say, hey, I'm working on this this year it would be helpful if you could support me with this. It may be just words of affirmation and where it may be a phone call once a week, right? We're not help teaching our friends. We teach people how to treat us, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yep. So we have to do some self-reflection. How can I be a better friend this year? Mm-hmm. How can I show up for their dreams? And you got to understand, everybody is not supposed to go to the next level with you. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you're better than to them, be, better than them. It just means that this particular chapter, I may have to go by myself, or I only may be able to bring, bring two or three. And it's never personal. It's just I have to say yes to the gifts and the talents and the vision that I've been given. Because arrogance, when we procrastinate, it, it comes from a place of arrogance that we have more time. Yeah. Chad, Chad, Chadwick uh, Baldwin's death yeah. proved to us. Yeah that we only have the time that we have been given, the last thing we want to have is excuses. I didn't have enough time. CC too. CC too. Look, there were so many deaths that took place, even with Kobe Bryant and his, and his, and his oh. greatness, it, it, it was, it, and his daughter. It was, it was so many, it, was, it seemed like it was death after death after death. So, mm-hmm. Some people were like, I can't take another death. Yeah. And, and, and as heartbreaking as it was, it should have been a wake up call because oftentimes we post state our greatness to a day that may never come. And so we have a responsibility to focus on what we've been given now. And the more time that you invest in the now and plan for the future, mm-hmm. you're able to maximize what, what when he left this world, when, when Chadwick left, what I loved about his humility is that he, had a, he has an insulated circle of confidants 
that were saying, hey, we're going to support you until your last day. So, so even though he was putting out great production with all humility and people were talking all types of things, now they know that he had cancer. But before they had a whole bunch of this say, but it never stopped him from going after what he was focused on. Mm-hmm. His intentionality and his, his grace, his humility, but his power, his power to be able to say, I want to reflect great people of this country who, who are African-American with the Thurgood Marshall, with all the different movies that he did, he gave African-Americans a confidence that they've never seen themselves portrayed for on a screen. So little boys were talking about, I, I, I'm a king, Wakanda forever. Yeah, yeah. You, had pe- you had people who were in their 50s and 60s, 70s and 80s. Matter of fact, one of the ladies on the cast of Wakanda was nine years old and it was like, someday I'm going to be an actress. And her little, her little grandson said, well, why not now? And she ended up one, having a play. She's never been an actress before. And she ended up getting one of the roles of one of the older stateswomen in the council. I did not and know that. It was, it was her, and, and it, it, it was, it, it, I just got a drop down because I remember this story. And she's never been an actor, actress before, but her, her grandson challenged her to go for the part. And so she ended up going for the part and it ended up getting it. She's never been an actress before, but she ended up getting it and actually got the part. So at, at not, I think she's in her late 80s or early 90s, her very first role as an actress. Now she's been having a dream to be an actress for over 80 years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And her grandson was able to say, well, grandma, when are you, gonna, when are you gonna, ever gonna choose to do that? And she took action. And because she took action, she ended up on the screen where millions of people with the highest grossing movie Billion. in the history, yes. high, highest grossing movie in the history, of, of cinema, but also black culture, she had a part in it before she left the earth. Like I said, um, and the, reason why, the reason why I'm so serious about being intentional, and I'll tell you this, um, and this will free some people because I, I, when I tell this story, I, I usually kind of get, I get, I get a little somber. Mm-hmm. And, then, and some, some people will be like, well, why are you so passionate? Why are you so excited about this? It's because for two reasons, I have two stories. Okay. So, the, the beauty of courage is knowing about the value of time. When I was six months old, I was diagnosed with spinal meningitis. So I was told I would not live past six months. I was told my brain was fried. And if I was to ever make it past six months, I'd be a vegetable for the rest of my life. So, so when, when, you, when you have been given a diagnosis from life, from, 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 from other experts, and God decides, I have a different plan for you. You don't take time as nonchalantly, you maximize it. You maximize it because the day that you think you're trying to, you're, the day that you're saying, "Oh, I got more time to do that," may not be really true. And so every day, I live, I move, and I breathe, and I, I'm, I'm intentional about my day, simply because if today's my last day, what will be my impact? Many people think they don't have an impact simply because they're looking at an ocean when, they're not, when they really should be looking, looking at a lake. And what I say about the lake is your ability, what you do in the air is dropping a pebble in a pond. And when you drop that pebble in the pond, there is a ripple effect that happens in the pond that you never really see the full ending of. But most people are afraid to drop what they have been given in the earth because of criticism, fear, judgment, and I, what I would challenge you to be able to do is be able to say, they're not responsible for your dream. You are. And if you really look and say, God, you trusted me, whether it be God, the universe, you trusted me with this vision. You've trusted me with these gifts and these talents. What is going to be my legacy? What am I going to put on this earth? What, are, what was I put on this earth to do? And go after that. Because when you're so clear on what you're going after, those distractions and that negativity and those and all those other people saying what you can't do, it really when when you get to where you need to go, they're gonna say, Oh, I always knew you could do it. It's gonna be after the fact. Yep. And I know for and I, and I want to say this to somebody who's like, Well, my spouse is not the most supportive, or my friends don't buy my products. Trust me, strangers many times will be the ones that show up for you, and then your family and friends might come along. Mm-hmm. So give yourself some grace and give them some grace because your impact was supposed to go further than your zip code. 
I know, I know. We 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 pray the zip code and say, you know what? All these people, if you really love me, we put these ultimatums on love and, and loyalty. If you really love me, you would buy this incomplete product that I really haven't given 110% of my time to. I was hoping someone else. You know that one room when we have guests and we just throw all of our stuff in there and say, hey, just don't go in that room. I, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna peek in there real quick. Um I got that room. <laughs> <laughs> we're like we're going on zoom we're like okay make sure everything on that side we're not going to show nothing on this side they better not ask me to stand up right we we how we do the small thing is a reflection of how we do the big thing mm -hmm. and so for many of us we have we have created a habit of just of of sudden we praise mediocrity at such a high level you don't really you know and, and many times when you're good you're good at the cost of never really becoming great because somebody pats you on the back and gives you a standing ovation just for being good. There are things, and, and that's the difference between operating from your genius and your zone of passion. There are things that you naturally do that other people have to go to school for or people have to work twice as hard to be able to do. And because you're just good at it, you never go into self-mastery until you see someone who's mastered their craft. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, I'm supposed to be doing that. I'm supposed to, I think, I think that's supposed to be me. The reason why I said it is because m m many times our heroes are commercial breaks of who we're supposed to be. I know. We in there. <laughs> so, so tell me who your Hall of Fame people are and why you look up to them. What attributes do you look up to them for? Because they, they're showing you what's possible for you just mm -hmm. on a different level. Mm-hmm. I've always been fascinated with Lisa Nichols. I love her. Um, I said, someday I'm going to meet her. And mm -hmm. after meeting her twice, she says, I need you to be a part of my team. Shut and up. Was, really? And I, was, and I was like, I put on my list two years ago that I was going to meet you. And, and someone walks me to the bar where she's wearing all white. And says, hi, my name is Lisa Nichols. It's a pleasure to meet you at an event that she was not supposed scheduled to be at. What I tell you about the law of intentionality, yeah. being intentional will get you so much further than just hoping for a dream. Mm -hmm. Many times we're just, hope, we're, we're just hoping something happens without taking action. Yeah, yeah. Take action. And can, I, can we release, you're, it's okay to fail. Give yourself permission to fail, but give yourself the grace to get back up. Mm -hmm. We are so afraid of failure and we're missing out on the wisdom. We're missing out on the nuggets that make us great. We're, make, we're, we're missing out on the character building that qualifies us for greatness. Many times we want greatness, but we don't have the character to say it. So when greatness is placed in front of us, we fold, we flop, or we, lose, we, 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 we come short of it simply because our character, our morality, our ethics wasn't built where we want to go. And so it's very, very important that you get clear. And you're often, you're gonna hear me go back to clarity. Clarity of who I am, what do I want, what do I really want, mm -hmm. and what am I willing what am I willing to do to change? Because most times we want everybody else to change, but we're not willing to change. And even if we challenge the word change, where am I willing to grow? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Because when you stop growing, you've already started writing your death certificate. Cause that's the whole purpose of change is to grow. Right. But you, you got to understand you're fighting against the natural design of the brain. So how do I fortify my, my, my belief system beyond how my brain is naturally designed? I repetition. I speak life to my vision. I speak life to who I am. I build my own self-esteem. So when someone else tries to give me a, 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 a label that does not belong to me, based on my history, based on my past, or based on my shortcomings, I get to control all the lead and move forward versus entertaining it. Because every thought is a seed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How many negative seeds have been planted to you as in your younger years, when you were still learning, as you still are, that have now become trees of doubt and frustration and fear? So we have to fortify our mind. So we do that through number one, awareness, understanding our strengths and our weaknesses. But we also do that through making sure that we take it in positive information. My daughter is going to be three. And she's been told no so many times. Yeah. 
as I have been told no so many yeah. times. So the idea of yes might be a challenge because if you've heard no, you've been heard no if you're a black woman in business, you've been heard no about if you're African-American or if you're a woman or if you're, 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 you're white, you've been told no so many different times that the opportunity for yes seems to always be, you don't even want the disappointment of a possible no. And so you don't take that opportunity. You don't take that job. You don't ask for that promotion because you're afraid to hear no when no just gives me a better direction. No just says, I need, I need more information or I'm going in a different direction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so many times we're stuck at, 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 a, at, a, at, a, at a, not a fight or flight, but a freeze. We're froze. We've been froze for years. We've been in the same place, looking at the same problem for years, wondering where sometimes something's going to change. It doesn't change until you do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I, many times when it comes to making New Year's resolutions, just, make, just say, this is what I'm committed to. Because commitment, when life will always show you what you're really committed to. If you're not really committed, you'll find an excuse. Yeah. If you're really committed, you'll find a way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then look at your patterns. Mm -hmm. Look at your patterns. If you look at your patterns and say, you know what? I know this is my blind spot. Then what are you doing to fortify your blind spot? If you need accountability, who's holding you accountable? And sometimes your friends may not be best accountability partners because like, you know what? They can be like, girl, you can do it again. Ah, it wasn't that big of a deal. You might need to hire a coach. You might need to get up in, 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 a, in a support group or a, a community group of like-minded people who are going in the same direction. But sometimes your friends and your family, they don't necessarily see how far you're trying to go. You need to be around. These are three people I believe that's going to make you successful in 2021. Okay. Um, there's three people that you need that I believe that will make you that will push you to the next level. You're going to need a mentor. You need to be someone who sees further than you and can speak life to the possibilities of who you are. A mentor. That mm -hmm. means they've done, they're probably four or five steps ahead of you in life, mm -hmm. but they will always be able to point you to your true north. Right? Your second person is your, your cohort, your person that's side by side. They're not your teacher, but they are your close student. That means you guys are in, you're in college together. You're studying together. You don't have to have the exact same goals, but mm -hmm. you want to be going in the same direction. So when you start talking about what's going wrong in your life, they can hold that space for you and vice versa, but also say, all right, girl, you've been crying for long enough. Let's do this. Right. That's the second layer of accountability. Mm -hmm. And your third level of accountability is having someone that you pull, reach down to pull up. Someone that you can pour into where your responsibility, because usually when you decide you want to quit, you have to explain to the person that you're pouring into why you quit. Yeah, yeah. When you, you show up, if you're a parent, you show up and do things that you never thought you would be able to do simply because you knew you had someone who was looking up to you. Mm -hmm. Those are three layers of accountability that allows people to be successful. The first one gives you hope and ins inspires you for more. The mm -hmm. second one shows you that it's possible and that you're not doing this alone. But the third one is also going to be able to inspire you and motivate you to be able to stretch further because someone else is waiting and, and, and waiting for you to become the best version of yourself so they can have the permission to, to dream bigger, to go after the thing that they were always afraid of because you took action, because you operated from a place of courage. You operated from a place of growth and abundance. You have now given them a blueprint on how they can be successful in their own personal lives. I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that. And I really, you guys who are listening and watching, I really hope that you have been taking notes. If not, that's okay. Rewind episode, go get your pen, go get your paper and take notes. I knew it was a no brainer to have you at the top of the year because you literally through this conversation, I'm pretty sure you literally have reset some mindsets, have you know, reset some, some visions and got people back on track because everything that you said today is the absolute truth. And mm -hmm. I can resonate with so much of what you said, because people look at me and they ask me, well, Keisha, how, how do you have, you know, the courage and the confidence to do what you do? And it's because I work on myself every single day, every single day, I'm doing something to, mm. like you say, exercise that muscle. It's not a day that goes by that I'm not working on 
me. And most people, mm. they're afraid of the, the, the awareness. They're, re, they're afraid of the reflection. They're afraid of working on themselves because they think working on themselves means that there's something wrong with them. They're flawed. They're weak. Um, and, and that's not even the case at all. Even uh, Beyonce practices 18 to 20 hours a day. Even Beyonce has, mm. uh, has a coach. Hell, Oprah says she has three life coaches. So if the people that you admire have all of this support and is helping and working on themselves constantly, why not? Why not you? Why not you? Mm. So and one of the ways that I love to work on myself is by reading. Well, I'm actually I'm addicted to Audible because I love Audible books. <laughs> but um, you're not the other one. <laughs> okay, good. So give mm, us an look, Audible. Give us an Audible look. recommendation, Jamal. Give mm. us an Audible recommendation. Um. So the reason why I, the reason why I really love that you made that point about reading is because um, Amber Aziza, who is one of who has mentored me for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, love Amber. Really, Shout out to Amber. Look, look. That's the only one of the reasons why we're connected. Yes. Um. She. I've, I've always been in awe of her brilliance. Um, and, you know, she's a CEO. She has multiple com companies, seven-figure business coach, the whole nine. Um, but what I learned about her is that you can, if you don't read, you minimize your ability to impact the world. You can only go but as far. So I was like, how many books do you read? Because I didn't, you know, I do one or two a year. She's mm -hmm. like, I do at least three. I do three or four a month. And so it, it helped me close the gap between why she's successful. It's because she's not only operating on her own thoughts and process, she's reading the brilliance of other people. They said, if you ever wanna find some, a secret to life, put it in a book. People who are really, really curious to know, they'll read the book. Because when, when you read somebody's book, you're reading their max impact of information that it took them 30 or 20 years to be able to conceptualize. Mm -hmm. You're downloading all that information and your subconscious is putting all that into a library in your brain for when you're gonna need it. But if you don't read, you, 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 you undermine your ability to lead other people. So some books that I'd recommend. Um, what, kind of, what kind of show is this? Is this a Christian show? Because I, I got a couple ones that are kind of edgy with titles, but they're great personal <laughs> development books. So hey, I want to make sure. We're not truth over here. So edgy, okay. is um, edgy what it is. All right. So there's, there's a book called um, The uh, Becoming by Michelle Obama. Oh, yes. Uh, there's, a, there, there's a book called um, Unf Yourself. Um, it's an orange cover. It's called Unf Yourself, um, but it is a it is a really good book, and it talks about how to deprogram your limiting beliefs about yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. So when when and, and th there's a couple other ones um, that I would go through. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, the Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins is another one. It talks about identifying. Um, she talks about just giving yourself a operating in the pause. Like giving yourself five seconds mm -hmm. to allow your brain to be able to say, I'm okay, I'm safe, and I can make it a better decision. Mm -hmm. um, now, oh, there's a couple. There's, a, there's also there's a book. Um, it's not an audio book, but it is a book um, about abundance and, and our, our, our understanding about money, um, our belief systems around money. Um, I might have to put it in the comments or put it in the group. Um, I'll get, well, this is what I'll do. I'll give you three more books um, that I'd recommend um, that have been life-changing or helpful. Um, and I'll make sure that your audience has act, you know, is able to point them out. Um, because I like to be able to make sure uh, that we are fortifying our minds with new knowledge, and new information. Um, so one of the great ways to make sure that you keep your spirits up is not by listening to R&B and depressing music, is by listening to something that's falls in these four categories, whether it be inspirational, motivational, educational, or transformational, mm -hmm. right? So if I, I do my, a lot of my books, when I'm driving back and forth to work. So that's usually 35 minutes back and forth to work. I'm listening to something that falls in those categories because I, what the, the world, 80% of the information we take in is negative. Mm -hmm. So how am I reinforcing what's possible, whether it be positivity, whether it be transformational, whether it be inspirational, motivational, or educational, I'm making sure that I put that, I schedule that into my day. So I know at some point where I need to listen to a word, whether it be from Bishop T.D. Jakes or, or um, or a couple other people who are inspirational, whether it be Michael Bedwith or whether it be someone like um, uh, Lisa Nichols, um, Tony Robbins, I'm listening to them giving me strategy, insight, perspective to be able to out, to be able to out strategize my issue. Because many times we live in our emotions, but our, emis our emotions are short term fuel. 
It will never get us to where we need to go. It's the discipline and accountability and finding our why. But I, I tell people all the time, when your why is big enough, the how will find a way. Mm. But many times we focus on the how and we love the how we're going to get this job done, how we're going to reach our dreams, how we're going to reach our goal, intimidate us that we never really take time on learning how to eat an elephant. And the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how can we how can we take these big goals and make them small, palatable goals? How can we make sure we do daily action towards it? And then what you realize, it's like termites. You have a beautiful house until those termites just keep on chipping away at your foundation. And then, <laughs> and then the foundation, same thing with those goals. Find small ways to chip away and take action, but also reward systems. So your reward system doesn't have to be big. You can say, you know, this week I'm going to treat myself to my favorite movie and some ice cream right? Yeah. Your brain, it says, this is no longer work. This is now fun. This is now, we now have more time to do it. Have you ever said, I got a whole bunch of stuff to do and then, you know, watching Netflix and then I'm binge watching a whole season. All right. Okay. I'm gonna get out because I know I'm talking about me. So there's like, I got all these tasks I need to do. And then I'm like, man, I've been, I spent the last three hours doing work. Same thing with COVID-19 when in 2020, we had all these goals that we were supposed to do. And then when we were at home bored, you were like, well, I'll just watch another season. I'll watch another season. And what you realize is that people who value their time, they make priorities. If it's not a priority, you're not gonna you're not gonna schedule it. The last thing I'll tell people is this: if I were, if I can guarantee you that I can help you create your vision into reality or shift your vision into reality, show me your calendar where you work on your dream. Where in your calendar does it say this is my designated time to work on my dream? Most people don't. I don't have it on my it's, calendar, but I do have a, maybe I need to add it to the calendar. The reason, the reason why it's not, it, so it, it's usually something vague in the back of my mind. I want to do this, but you have no designated time to focus on your dream, to strategize for your dream, but also to get divine downloads on how to get your dream accomplished. If your dream is so valuable and so important, it should have a priority. If it doesn't get scheduled, it doesn't get done. Because mm -hmm. the world will always demand more of your time, yes. your energy, and your brilliance. And you will give it to them because you're a giver, you're compassion, or they pay you more money to do it. But I'll give you a couple of secrets. If you're working for somebody, it's very rare that they will pay you the same amount of money for you to live in the same neighborhood as them. I'm going to leave you at that. Mm, we're gonna we're gonna leave that right there. Leave that right there. That's a conversation for a whole other day. That's a, we're gonna leave that right there. So round table discussion on that one. Look, the question is what do you not what do you want? Because when I tell you it's kind of like when you were a kid. What do you want to be when you grow up? And we find something that gets people off of our back because we really don't know. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go a second layer deep and say, what do you really, really want? that you're unapologetic about, that you're not afraid about, and if, if no one else believes in that you believe in it, that you're willing to go after, that you're gonna stop making excuses. Matter of fact, go ahead and write down your favorite excuses so you know it when you see it. And then next to that excuse is, but I choose to dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. That's an easy way to do quick programming. When you're able to identify what my favorite excuses are, usually there's a belief system behind there. Either I'm not enough, yeah. I'm not worthy mm -hmm. and no one else believes in it, mm -hmm. which are all three lies. All three lies. All three lies. All three lies. But they, make, they, but they give us a justification not to become the best version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we always will find people who will, who, who will love us in our mediocrity. Always. always. So hopefully this has been helpful with giving yeah. you some of the insight. Yeah. Look, I, yeah, I'm here. To, I, I'm here to serve. I love what I do. I can't turn it off. Um, and so Please usually don't. when I get a question, I when I get a question, I'm like, we can do this. This is <laughs> this is what I do. This is look. This is this is the project. I got I got people moving my house right now. I am literally in an empty room. But you guys won't be able to tell that simply because when opportunity presents itself, you have a responsibility to show up. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 have, you never know who you're going to impact. You never know what one sentence or what word may be able to get somebody to say, ah, that's the missing puzzle to what I was trying to accomplish. Absolutely. So um, I believe that nothing happens by accident. Everything is, uh, I believe that the steps of a, a, a good person are ordered by God.
Um, and whether you say the divine, the universe, whatever the case may be, nothing happens by accident. Um, mm-hmm. So if I was supposed to meet you, if I was supposed to, if you were supposed to hear, for that person says, I'm looking for a sign. Here it is. How many more signs, how many more signs are you looking for? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, You're like, okay, I need a sign. I don't like that one, give me another one, right? <laughs> and we're wasting time. We're wasting time. So if 2020 was not good, um, cool. What were the lessons learned, right? What were the relationships that were no longer serving you that you should have let go anyway? Um, but also, who are you going to be in this 2021, right? 21, the number of expectancy. What are you expecting for? But not only what are you expecting, what are you going after mm-hmm. without excuses? Mm-hmm. Get those excuses, leave those excuses in 2020, right? There's a whole bunch of stuff that we, we should have left there. And when, when, when people say, well, 2020 is about clarity, it was. It was about releasing the old so you can walk into the new. You cannot pour into a full cup. So if your cup is already full, pour it out so you can receive what's new, what's innovations. Many times we are focused on what's now and not operating from a place of genius of what's next. Mm. So I want you to, I challenge you to think about what's next. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Am I a consumer or am I a creator? Mm. Someone's paying for something and someone's writing their own price because they created something. Because they created it, yeah. Yeah, Step into your creativity. Step Um, into your genius. If nobody's told you this year or last year that you're a genius, neuroscience, peak performance coach, I'm telling you that you have a level of genius that no one else has. Maximize it, master it, because you're worthy of becoming the best version of yourself. Amen. 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 But before I let you go, please let us know uh, what's your meaning of living your truth when you hear, you know, these two words put together. Tell me what's your third word. All right. Living, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. The, the meaning of living your truth. Um, what's the meaning of living your truth when you complete this by completing this phrase? I'm going to give you two words and you tell me what your third word is. Self-awareness, purpose, and vision without a vision people perish Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if you have no if you have no vision you have you have no clear path of what you want to do what you want to accomplish um and so i'm very i'm very my, my three of my core principles are actually vision mission and purpose vision my ability to see what's now and what's coming my mission is heart and my hands um but purpose is what i'm willing to take action also with my feet um, so vision, mission, and purpose is a threefold principle that I live by um, because when you get clear on all three, and sometimes they're going to intertwine, but when, you, when you're in alignment with all three, you have complete clarity to take action and to be able to help other people, teach people how to support your vision as well. Um, but when you don't have a vision, it goes back to vague goals, sort of the vague, vague results. Um, vision is such a powerful thing. Um, that is why I called my company Vision Crafters, not after the lens crafters, but how do you craft your vision into reality? Um, vision is one is something that I'm very, very big on because um, it, it is the breadcrumbs to greatness. When you follow your vision, you, follow, you fall into your greatness. You fall into your purpose. You fall into your passion. You fall, you fall, fall into all that God has designed you to be able to give to the world. And so I believe that vision is so powerful and is why every person, regardless of your rich, back, poor, whatever the case may be, when you have vision, you have more than enough to become the best version of yourself. I love that. And nobody has said vision yet. I love that. Ooh, I love I'm in that. there. <laughs> you are in there. I told you the ball. Thank you so much, Jamal. You <laughs> are awesome. That's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. So I know what you're thinking. Keisha, why you didn't tell me to grab a pen and paper before listening to this conversation? You know why? Because I needed you to listen. (laughs) I needed you to listen. You needed to listen first. We needed to listen together for that matter, okay? So everything can really just soak in. And now that it's soaked in, now you can go back with your pen and paper to take notes. I didn't want you to miss out in any jams because you were too busy writing. Like how many times have you listened to a podcast episode or to some training video and you, you know, ferociously taking notes, but you're missing what the person is saying next, right? I didn't want that to happen for you. Now I have to say this just in case you don't want to say it. This episode was epic. (laughs) 
this episode was epic and I really hope that you show someone in your life how much you really love them by sharing this episode with them because this episode is definitely going to save somebody's life this episode is definitely going to change some mindsets in some lives okay it was so important for me so important for me to start this year with Jamal so we can really go deep into recalibrating our thoughts because 2020 dropped the bomb on us right 2020 dropped a big ass bomb and we needed to recalibrate going into 21 so i hope and pray this episode truly set you free in ways like it did for me you guys because let me tell you something i listen to these um episodes too after i record them i go back and i release them to my episodes so i am going through this journey with you i am learning with you guys so listen to this episode as many times as you need to and if you want to if you are listening to this on livinghertruthpodcast.com, leave a comment below the episode so we can continue the conversation, all right? Leave a comment. Let me know how you what you felt about this episode. Let everybody else who comes through the website know what you felt about this episode and what they have to look forward to, all right? Livinghertruthpodcast.com to leave your comment. So just in case you don't know, we're just getting started in my Strategize Your Vision series. Again, for more information on my Master Life class, Strategize Your Vision, visit strategizeyourvision.com. If this is your first episode that you've listened to this year, I'm going to need you to go back to last week's episodes, okay? Okay, I'm going to need you to go back so you can get the framework for the next 12 weeks, all right? All right. So for next week's conversation, we're going to talk about gardening. <laughs> we're going to talk about gardening, fam. I know, I know. Like, Keisha, what? How the hell does gardening fit into strategizing your vision, right? <laughs> I know you look at the screen like, what the hell? <laughs> but when I tell you, trust me, trust me, okay? Trust me. You'll never look at gardening the same again after next week's episode. Trust me. Family, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my podcast every single week. If you need support with recalibrating your brain so you can take control of 21 and not let 21 take control of you, head on over to strategizeyourvision.com for more information. Also note that all Audible recommendations given on any episode are linked in the show notes and you can try Audible for free to so take advantage of it. Please remember to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Also, don't forget to click the join community link that's in the show notes so we can stay connected. Family, as you know, I set a lofty goal to touch one million hearts within the first two years of the podcast. And I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share this conversation with at least four people that you know, and repost on your favorite social media platform. Well, family, I appreciate you. Do you know that? Has anybody said today that they appreciate you? I do. I appreciate you. And my heart is filled with so much gratitude. And until next time, always remember that you are enough and your truth is beautiful.